In simplex method, the constraints can have either a negative or a positive right hand side. Now if the right hand side is negative, then we need to multiply both the left hand side and the right hand side by minus 1 in order to make the right hand side positive. For example, let's consider the constraint 8x1 minus 3x2 is greater than or equal to minus 6. Now if we multiply both the sides by minus 1, we get minus 8x1 plus 3x2 is less than equal to 6. Here, note that the inequality sign has changed from greater than equal to to less than equal to. Now once the right hand side is positive, then the form of inequalities in the constraints can be either of greater than equal to, less than equal to or simply equal to. Now in the steps to solve simplex method problems, we have already seen how to solve examples when the inequality sign is less than equal to. So this we have already seen. Now in this video, we will look at the steps to solve linear programming problems where the inequality sign is either greater than equal to or simply equal to. This method is also known as the big M method. Now let us consider an example to understand the steps to solve these problems. Let's say that the example is to minimize z where z is equal to 2x1 plus 3x2. So this is our objective function and it is subject to the constraints 3x1 plus 5x2 is greater than or equal to 30. 5x1 plus 3x2 is greater than or equal to 60. And x1, x2 are greater than or equal to 0. Now here the right hand side of the constraints are non-negative. So we don't need to multiply the constraints by minus 1. Now the next step is to standardize the problem. So let's look at the steps. So let us look at the first constraint. Now the first constraint here says that we need to produce enough quantity of x1 and x2 so that the left hand side is greater than or equal to 30. And similarly, the second constraint implies that the quantity of x1 and x2 should be such that the left hand side is greater than or equal to 60. Now in order to solve this problem using simplex method, we need to convert the inequalities into equations. That means we need to convert the inequalities in such a way that the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side. Now in this case, since the left hand side is greater than or equal to the right hand side, if we subtract the surplus production quantity from the left hand side, then the left hand side will become equal to the right hand side. So for the first constraint, we will consider the surplus variable as S1 and for the second constraint, we will consider the surplus variable as S2. So now our equations become 3x1 plus 5x2 minus 
s1 is equal to 30, 5x1 plus 3x2 minus s2 is equal to 60. So here since we are producing x1 and x2 in such a way that the left hand side is greater than or equal to 30 and so we have to subtract the excess production so that the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side and that's why in this case s1 and s2 are known as the surplus variables while if you recall in problems where the constraints have an equality sign of less than equal to so left hand side is less than equal to right hand side there we add the surplus variables in order to make the left hand side equal to the right hand side and there s1 and s2 are known as the slack variables because there s1 and s2 represent the unutilized capacity now as we have seen in the videos for simplex method in order to obtain the initial feasible solution we need to consider the values of x1 and x2 as zero so if we enter those values then our first equation becomes minus s1 is equal to 30 and the second equation becomes minus s2 is equal to 60. So this means s1 is equal to minus 30 and s2 is equal to minus 60. Now this violates the non-negativity constraint in linear programming. So in linear programming you know all the variables x1, x2, s1, s2 should be greater than or equal to 0. However, if we put x1, x2 as zeros, we are getting s1 is equal to minus 30 and s2 is equal to minus 60. And that is not acceptable in linear programming. So in order to overcome this situation, we introduce an artificial variable in each of the constraints. So what are we now going to introduce is artificial variables. Now these variables do not have any physical meaning or economic significance. That is why we should not allow these artificial variables to appear in the final solution. The sole purpose of artificial variables is to keep all the basic variables in the initial feasible solution as non-negative. So here we will introduce the artificial variables a1 and a2. So then our constraints become 3x1 plus 5x2 minus s1 plus a1 is equal to 30 5x1 plus 3x2 minus s2 plus a2 is equal to 60. Now one thing to keep in mind is that generally when we are finding the basic initial feasible solution we consider the decision variables x1 x2 as zeros we don't consider s1 s2 as zeros however when we have the artificial variables in the constraints then the surplus variables that is s1 and s2 are also set to zero along with the decision variables while finding the initial basic feasible solution so in order to find the basic initial feasible solution for this problem we will consider x1 x2 s1 s2 equals to 0 
So then what we'll get is a1 is equal to 30 and a2 is equal to 60. So before we introduce the artificial variables, the basic initial feasible solution was coming out as minus 30 and minus 60. Whereas now we are getting positive values for the basic initial feasible solution. Now a point to be noted here is that the use of an artificial variable is not limited to minimization problems. So here we have considered a minimization problem, but artificial variables are not limited to minimization problems. An artificial variable may be used in maximization problems as well. So in general, if the problem has at least one greater than or equal to constraint, regardless of maximization or minimization problem, artificial variable can be used. Now since the artificial variables do not carry any physical meaning, they must not appear in the optimal solution. So in case of any minimization objective, such as cost minimization, we can achieve this by assigning a very high cost. Let's consider the high cost as M, capital M. So this is the high cost M to the artificial variables in the objective function. Now the extremely high cost assigned to the artificial variable that is A1 and A2 automatically removes them from the optimal solution. So let's understand this concept in detail. So when we perform the optimality test, basically we have a row called CJ, which is nothing but the coefficients of all the variables in the objective function. Now for A1, let's say the coefficient is M, which is a high cost. So it will be M. Now we'll also have a ZJ row, which will have a value. Let's say this value is 20. Let me just separate this out. Okay. Now as part of optimality test, what we have to do is we have to find out ZJ, sorry, CJ minus ZJ. So here we'll get M minus 20. Now the way to analyze the CJ minus ZJ column for minimization objective is that a positive value in the row CJ minus ZJ indicates the amount by which the cost will increase if the corresponding variable which in this case is let's say A1 is introduced in the solution. So basically, since we have this M as a very high cost number, M minus 20 will be a positive value because M can be considered as a as infinitely large number. So M minus 20 is still a positive value. And since this is positive, what this means is that the cost is going to increase if A1 is introduced in the solution. So automatically, A1 is not going to be introduced in the solution. Now let's consider the case where we have a maximization objective. So this one is for minimization. So let's look at maximization here. So in case of maximization objective such as profit maximization, The coefficients of the artificial variables are kept as minus m, which indicates a very high loss in profit. So basically the cj value is minus m. And let's say the zj value comes out as 20. So cj minus zj 
will become minus m minus 20 which is a very high negative value and the step for optimality test says that a negative value in the cj minus zj row indicates the amount by which the profit will be decreased if a unit of that variable is introduced in the solution. So since m is a very high number, minus m means the profit will decrease drastically. So automatically this variable, let's say this is a1, gets removed from the optimal solution because you will not consider this column in the solution. So in our current example, the objective function is minimize z where z is equal to 2x1 plus 3x2. So this now becomes z is equal to 2x1 which is here already plus 3x2 plus 0s1. So for the slack variables or surplus variables we are considering that these variables do not have any impact on the cost. So we will consider this as 0 coefficient plus 0 s2. Now this is a minimization objective and in minimization we consider m as the coefficient of the artificial variables. I mean m will consider the coefficient of artificial variables even if it is a maximization objective. But in minimization, we will consider this as positive m, whereas in maximization, we will consider negative m. So, plus m a1 plus m a2. So, this becomes our objective function where we have to minimize z. So, this is how we can standardize the problem in case the constraints have a greater than or equal to sign. Now what if instead of greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, we have the constraint as left hand side is equal to right hand side. So let's say the constraint is in the form ax1 plus bx2 is equal to c. So here the constraint has the sign equal to. So here since the constraint is already in the form of equality, there is no need to add any slack or surplus variable. However, without slack variables or surplus variables, we will not be able to find a basic initial feasible solution because in the basic initial feasible solution we will put x1 x2 as 0 so we will not have any value for the basic initial feasible solution so we introduce the artificial variables in these equations so the constraint will become ax1 plus bx2 plus a1 is equal to c and in the objective function the coefficient of the artificial variable will be minus m if the objective is maximization and plus m if the objective is minimization. So these are the basic concepts of how to handle linear programming problems using simplex method when the constraints have a greater than equal to or simply an equal to sign. Also this method is known as the big M method. In subsequent videos we will look at some of the examples and see how we can solve them using the big M method.